my dear children yesterday we discussed about the leaves isn't it parts of the leaf and the functions of the leaf and that time i told you and uh, who can tell me the functions of the leaf yes photosynthesis and second one is what transpiration and you know by the process of photosynthesis leaves prepare the food in the form of sugar isn't it and sugar is a form of starch so and the excess food is stored in different parts of the plant clear okay so through an experiment we can prove that plants prepare the food and in the form of what sugar in the leaves okay plants prepare the food in the form of sugar in the leaves can we go to that experiment yes so first we take a potted plant you know plant in the pot keep that potted plant in the sunlight for nearly two to three hours two to three hours you should keep that potted plant in the sunlight after that you can pluck one leaf from that plant pluck one leaf from that plant and so i hope the first step is clear keep the potted plant in the sunlight for nearly two to three hours okay then afterwards pluck a leaf from that plant and you should do what you know and boil that water sorry boil that leaf in the okay uh, keep that leaf in the boiling water that also can be done or boil the leaf okay boil the leaf in the water after some time you know for what we are boiling the leaf it is to kill the you know the leaf it is actually the cells are living so if to kill the cells only we are boiling the leaf so first we want to boil the leaf then after boiling definitely the leaf will be killed then you should second step is what you know want to boil it in the alcohol you know what is alcohol yes it is a drink isn't it alcohol so and you know spirit you can use the spirit also for preparing the alcohol you know whiskey brandy and all no they are using the spirit so if spirit is there also we can use that so the next step boil the leaf in the alcohol unlike the water we can boil the water directly by keeping on the flame that we are doing it regularly but we cannot do it with the alcohol because it's highly flammable it get catches fire easily so we cannot boil the alcohol directly so what we should you know we need to boil it in the water bath you know what is water bath boil the water as usual in a bowl and keep the alcohol in another bowl or maybe in a test tube in the laboratory we are using the test tube and in the test tube pour some alcohol and keep that test tube in the boiling water and you know let the fire be there and as the water boils because of that due to that heat you know the alcohol starts boiling that's double boiling method that is what double boiling method at home you know if you want to you know reheat the thorn or curry and all we can use the same method if you keep it directly on the fire sometimes no it get what uh, you know it dried fast and you may uh, change into carbon kaidine powa just to avoid that your mother of course if you ask she may say that same method she may also use if oven is there we are using the oven otherwise no we can use the double boiling method boil the water in a bowl and inside that you can the dish that you want to get heated in another bowl you can keep it inside that water and just boil that water again with the help of that boiling water the heat is there definitely the food will be get heated same manner the here the alcohol is getting what boiled that is the double boiling method and uh, afterwards no you know for what we are boiling it in the alcohol to kill the in the water to kill the to kill the cells or to kill the leaf here to remove the color you know the color of the uh, leaf is green to remove the green color we are boiling it in the alcohol okay afterwards the leaf will be colorless or pale white color then wash then afterwards no uh, take it out of that alcohol wash in cold water and you know just keep on a glass plate afterwards pour some iodine solution you know iodine solution it is a solution used for checking whether the food items or whether any substance contains what starch or not it's an uh, iodine solution we usually use for checking whether any food item or any substance you know potato when we uh, cut the potato into two equal halves or small piece also when we pour, pour the iodine solution after some time the pot that area will become slight blue black in color 
cooked rice also when we add that uh, iodine solution to cooked rice also the color will change into what blue black that is a normal thing every time you know for, uh, for experiment we are using that iodine clear here also you know that after keeping the leaf on the glass plate you need to add iodine solution after a few minutes we could see that the color of the leaf becomes what blue black in color what about the color of the leaf it becomes blue black in color from this we could understand that leaves prepare food in the form of starch is it clear first keep the potted plant in the dark for how many hours three hours mm, then yes pluck one leaf from it then boil it in the water for what killing the leaf then boil it in the alcohol how uh, in a water bath or keeping it in the boiling water for what we are boiling it in the alcohol yes for coloring of removing the green color of the leaf then wash it cold water then keep it as a uh, keep on a glass plate add with solution iodine solution and after some time what about the color of the leaf then blue black in color this shows that plants prepare or leaves prepare the food in the form of starch now you can watch a video to show okay. that yes. starch is present in the leaves materials required healthy potted plant alcohol iodine solution dropper forceps tripod stand with wire gauge bunsen burner two beakers with water watch glass test tube process take a healthy potted plant and keep it in the sunlight for a few hours after a few hours pluck a green leaf from the plant now boil this leaf in water to kill it after boiling in water again boil it in alcohol the purpose of boiling leaf in alcohol is that it dissolves greenish part that is chlorophyll then wash the leaf in cold water and place it in a watch glass now pour some drops of iodine solution over it observation the leaf turns blue i hope it is very clear shall we move to the next session yes another function we discussed about that is the transpiration clear what is transpiration yes changing of or uh, changing the water into water vapor isn't it escaping of water in the form of water vapor through which part of the leaf stomata that part is that process is known as what transpiration so don't you want to check whether the transpiration occurs or not because we can't see when we look at the plant we cannot see whether transpiration is occurring or not so Through small experiment, we can prove it whether transpiration occurs or not. Say, if I take a potted plant, we can cover one that plant by using, uh, you know, a, a branch or a twig by using a polythene bag. It should be transparent. Transparent that means it should be clear. Transparent polythene bag. You can cover it and cover it very tightly and keep under the sun. after some time nearly i think 1 to 2 hours when we observed that we could see water droplets inside the polythene bag 
He could see water droplets where inside the polythene bag. From this we could understand that the water is changing into water vapor and who is releasing that? Stomata is releasing. This is another experiment to prove that whether transpiration occurs in plants very easily we can check it. You can just cover a potted plant, not whole plant don't want to cover. Maybe a small branch of the twig keep under the sun. After two to three hours, one or two hours, just observe that, don't remove it. Just observe the polythene curve from outside. You could see what the droplets there. From this, we could understand that transpiration takes place in plant. Clear children? Now you can do Transpiration in plants. All plants from the smallest weed to the tallest tree, which is several meters tall, need water. Plants are not mobile. How do they manage to get water right up to the tallest branch? The roots of plants absorb water and mineral salts from the soil through the root hairs by the process of osmosis. Only a small percentage of this water is used by the plant. The rest gets evaporated from the surface of leaves. This evaporation of water from the plant is called transpiration. Let us perform a simple experiment to show that transpiration takes place in plants. Take a medium-sized, well-watered potted plant. Cover it with a transparent polythene bag A and tie its mouth at the base of the stem. Next to the potted plant, place an empty polythene bag B with its mouth tied. Expose this setup to sunlight for an hour or two. Drops of water will appear on the inner side of the bag A. The polythene bag B will not show any water drops in it. The leaves give off water vapor and due to condensation of the water vapor, tiny drops of water get collected. This experiment shows that plants give out water to the atmosphere through transpiration. I hope it is clear, isn't it? I hope you have enjoyed the videos. Okay, now one more thing we discussed about the insectivorous plants in the last class. What are insectivorous plants? Yes, plants that feed on insects. So, you know that uh, the leaves are modified to form the flap, isn't it? Then that flap closes and catches the insect in the case of pitcher plant. Don't you want to see how the Venus flytrap catches the insects? Don't you want to see it? Very interesting. So now we can move on to that video. Isn't it? Yeah, how cunningly it catches the insects. Am I right? Yes. So, now today we are going to discuss about the another important part of the plant. Shall I give you a clue? It's the most beautiful part of the plant. Absolutely right. It is the, it is the flower. Isn't it? It is the flower. Today, we are going to discuss about the flower. Okay, so when we look around us, we could see some plants, they do not bear flowers. Those who haven't, no, just now you are so free now, you can go and check outside. You know, some plants are there, you know, but leaves are there, branches are there, but they do not produce the flowers. But some plants are there, they produce the flowers. So two types of plants are there. One group is known as what? Flowering plants. Flowering plants. Another group it is known as what? Non-flowering plants. 
flowering plants are not flowering plants flowering plants that produce what flowers very easy to remember non flowering plants fl plants that that do not produce the flowers so non flowering plants example i could say algae then you know pine tree you can look at the board and the examples are there algae uh, pine tree then you know mosses these are some of the examples of non flowering plants they do not produce the flowers you know pine tree you cannot see it here but you know that they produce only seeds you cannot see what uh, uh, cones already seen in the i think in the first or second chapter pine tree uh, produces the cones last year also you studied about it so no flowers are produced there uh, similarly you know uh, algae you know pile and all it's a type have you seen algae uh, pile green color they do not produce the flower so likewise mosses are there ferns are there so these are the examples of non flowering plants flowering plants numerous example rose lily hibiscus mango chai so, so many so many examples are there for the flowering plants okay yes. so we could say different types of flowers can you tell me what or uh, what are different types of flowers or what about the color of the flowers they may be yes red color yellow color white color pink color orange color varieties and variety color varieties and varieties of flowers are seen around us isn't it so beautiful also am i right yes what is the function of these flowers to attract the insects isn't it you should remember one thing flowers help in reproduction you know what is reproduction producing the new plant or producing the new uh, flowers they produces the seed if seed is there only what happens new plant can be produced am i right so the flowers they help in reproduction very very important function of the flower flowers they help in what they help in reproduction what is reproduction giving birth to a new baby or new here we cannot say baby new plant that process is known as what reproduction so flowers they help in what reproduction clear okay so you can see that you know in some plants we can see single type of flowers i'll show you see here you can see only single type of flower hope it is clear single flower only we could see here single flower normally okay and uh, here observe cluster of flowers isn't it bunch of flowers are there bunch of flowers are there isn't it you know ixora you are familiar with this flower tachi you know tachi in different areas no different pronunciation hope you have seen it isn't it here we could see cluster of flowers so in some plants we could see single flower another plant we could see what cluster of flowers another you look at the board you can see another type of flower a main head is the surrounded by numerous flowers look at the board you can see that centrally one uh, you know head like structure is there surrounded by numerous flowers so different types of flowers different styles of flowers different colors of flowers are seen around us okay yes hope it is clear about the flower yes flowers are uh, two types of plants are there flowering plants and non flowering plants then you know different types of flowers are there sometimes flowers can be seen alone sometimes they can be seen as clusters or groups sometimes you can see a single head I mean round uh, surrounded by numerous flowers okay so now we can move on to the now the important thing structure of the flower okay yes structure of the flower or i could say the parts of the flower okay so i would like to show you a flower okay can you name this flower what is that yes hibiscus or malayalam we say chambaratti or show flower another name is there. so hope this flower is very much familiar to you clear so this flower is having different parts observe the flower very carefully and this part it is known as the hope it is clear okay this part is known as the pedicel this part attach the flower okay 
you can observe this flower and you can see it is see the part that is attached hope it is clear that pedicel thunder see yes that part is known as the pedicel this is the area where the flower is attached to the stem or the branches that part is known as what pedicel clear yes so this part is clear then observe this part which color is this green color and that part is known as the this uh, stalk of the flower it is known as the stalk of the flower it is known as the pedicel green part it is known as the sepal this part this green part it is not this green part not this one this is the pedicel this green part it is known as the sepal what about this part attractive part of the flower it is known as the or colorful part of the flower it is known as the petal colorful part of the flower it is known as the petal this is the in all the plants all the flowers this colorful part it is known as the petal clear so this is the pedicel this green is the green is the sepal and the colorful part it is known as the petal clear these three parts okay so before going to the other parts first we can discuss about the function of this sepal this sepal has got important function who can tell me what is the function of the sepal it protects the flower especially in the bud condition just observe this is a bud see this flower you know this will become the flower later and this is covered by what you know green color hope you can see it isn't it yes so this sepal it protects the flower in the bud condition one more bud i will show you it will be more clear see see these all are the buds this also bud can you see any color here only green color isn't it flower is there inside it so who is giving protection sepals are protecting the flower in the bud condition what's the function of sepal protects the flower protects the flower in the which condition in bud condition protect the flower in the bud condition that is the main function of the sepal sepal protects the flower in the bud condition clear yes and what about the function of the petal as the most attractive part of the plant it attracts the insects for pollination you know what is the main function of the petal attracts the insects for what attracts the insects for what pollination insects for pollination attracts the insects for pollination by seeing the beautiful red color or white color i will show you another see white flower okay white flower so it by seeing this beautiful flowers a beautiful colors only you know the insects are attracted towards the flower for suck for what these insects are attracted towards the flower we are going to eat see now we can observe the middle part of the Shall I read this? Okay. See, I will show you the middle part. Flower is not an obedient flower. Okay. Yes. So, could you see this structure? Big structure. This structure. see the tip is here hope it is clear big one you no know? yes. this is known as the carpel or one more term is the it is the pistil they are the female reproductive part they are the female reproductive part Okay, this big one. 
hope it is clear this big one and you can see the tip also yes this is the female reproductive part of the flower so i just uh, draw it here the structure will be normally like this yes some main three parts and the top part it is known as the stigma middle part it is known as the style this part is known as the ovary inside that we can see numerous ovules so these are the main parts of this female reproductive system that is this okay so we can divide inside ovary can be seen inside this only okay it cannot be seen from outside ovary can be seen inside the, inside the sepal okay inside it so here this part is the style a very beautiful name isn't it style and tip you could see another beautiful structure hope it is clear that is the stigma what is that stigma this area is known as the style and ovary is the bottom portion and it cannot be seen from outside okay because it is in inside when we cut the plant only ovary can be seen okay so hope the structure is clear yes. now we can move on to the can you see some small structures there surrounded surrounding this style so many smaller smaller structures they are the male reproductive system and i will just draw the picture then will be more clear to you yes. this is the anther this is the filament this so here you could see only one female structure or carpel or pistil is there but numerous you could see that if you have the uh, shoe flower hibiscus at home after the class you can go and observe it you can see so many what male structures are there only one female and we could see so many male structures and that structure we can call it as what stamen whole structure and this is known as what carpel or the pistil this is the statement so this this is these are the so many statements are there we could see only one female structure surrounded by numerous you can say so many statements are there so many what are they statements are they statements are the is it female or male male reproductive structures and what about the female reproductive structure it is the carpel or the pistil and just observe this structure we could see just observe it carefully you could see some uh, yellow powder at the tip of this hope it is clear yellow powder isn't it and that yellow powder is it is the pollen grain in malayalam you could see pumbodi that is the yellow color powder seen at the tip of the stamen it is known as the i hope you can see it it is the if you couldn't see it clearly after the class just take one hibiscus flower and observe it pollen grains are there that's a pumbodi for yes for this uh, sucking the nectar of course for you know the for sucking the nectars only insects come and sit on the flowers and while sucking the nectar definitely what happen you know pollen grain sticks on there you know mouth part also okay the limit that we will discuss in the next year you are going to study in detail about the about the reproduction in flowers or reproduction plant now don't want to study just understand the reproductive parts and where we could see the pollen grains or the pumpudi it can be seen at the tip of the stamen that is the anther inside the anther you can see in the picture in sorry in here in the flower at the tip of the anther we can see the pollen grains and when we touch the stigma you could see very beautiful decoration isn't it very it is sticky i touch it now we could feel not that much sticky light stickiness is there otti pidikka light to you know to stick the pollen grains on it so that process and all no no don't want to study seventh standard when you go there that time you will study in detail okay now just understand the important parts of the flower they are the you know pedicel or the stalk this is the this is the sepal what's the function of sepal 
protect the flower in the bad condition. And this is the most attractive part of the flower. What is that? Petal. And you know, inside the petal, we could see what? Two structures are there. One is the male reproductive structure known as the stamen. Can you see only one stamen or numerous stamens? Absolutely right. We can see numerous stamens there, isn't it? And what about the carpal or the pistil? How many we can see? Only one C, only one carpal or pistil can be seen here. Clear? And surrounded by numerous stamens. And at the tip of the stamen, that is the one structure is known as what? And the uh, tip of the anther, anther produces what? Anther produces the pollen grains. Clear? So this is the structure of the flower. And flower helps in reproduction. We can observe this flower also. Yes, you know. This is also, see numerous, uh, just observe the center portion. Can't you see the big one? That is the green color. Observe it, that is the uh, female structure. And uh, in the bottom portion, you can see that white color. Tip pollen grains are there. Hope it is clear. Just look, observe it carefully. This flower also, color, middle one green color. And you know, so many, you know, um, stamens are there. At the tip, we could see the pollen grains. So this, in some cases, in some flowers, we could see only one structures are there. Sometimes they, that flower is a male or sometimes we can call such flower as what? Female. Papaya is an example. Papaya, some papaya plant produces only male flowers. Some papaya plant produces only female flowers. But hibiscus and this, you know, this mandaram and all, they have both the sexes together. Male and female can be seen in the single flower. Just for to understand only I am telling this. Sometimes when we observe any flower, we cannot see all these two parts. In hibiscus we can see, uh, you know, this mandarin you can see. But in case of papaya, watermelon and all, you can see only single thing. Maybe a female structure or maybe male structure. Do we belong to which group? Do we have both male and female in our body? No, females are having only female structure. Male is having only male structure, isn't it? Uh, that is the case of sunflowers. Sunflowers are unisexual. Just uh, uh, understand the term unisexual. Uni means what? Only one sex. Some flowers are having only single sex. Or the we could see sometimes carpal or sometimes what? Only the stamen, male or female. Sometimes both can be seen in the single flower also. That you have seen example here. Okay, papaya flower, watermelon, etc. They have all one flower. We could see only male or the female, not together. Clear? So these are the importance of the flower flowers helping what reproduction and who are familiar with the different parts of the flower and the functions of the flower isn't it now look at the board you can see the once again look at the parts of the flower very carefully just look at it sepal pedicel petal female structure in the middle surrounded by what female structure in the middle surrounded by what male structure okay sepal it is the green part petal is the part that get attached to the plant then uh, petal most attractive part of the plant or the, especially the flower then middle one female structure as well as what male structure so where is we come to the end of this chapter as i used to say every time Read the textbook thoroughly, dear children. Do the activities and do the assignments and submit it in the proper time. Okay, children. Until we meet in the next class, it's bye from me. Take care.